Welcome all and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the fourth session of the chapter Formation of Earth. In this session, we are going to explore in depth about how our Earth, Moon and Sun are interrelated. In this session, we are going to achieve the following objectives. Develop understanding about the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse. Develop understanding about the phases of moon. Examine how tides occur on earth. Acquire knowledge about the uses of tides. First, some misconceptions. Many people believe that moon has light of its own. Some people believe that we see different shapes of moon because it comes in and goes out of earth's shadow. Moon's gravity is very less and therefore it does not affect earth in any way. Lunar eclipse is observed on every new moon. We observe similar number of lunar eclipse and solar eclipse every year. Tides are caused only due to the effect of moon's gravity. Solar eclipse can be seen from anywhere on the earth. All these are misconceptions. During the course of the session, you will understand what the real facts are. First things first. Let us get familiar with some important terms that we are going to come across in this session. Tides. Tides are the alternate rise and fall of the level of ocean water on earth. Lunar eclipse. An event where sun, earth and moon are in straight line and moon is right behind the earth into its shadow. Solar eclipse. An event where sun, earth and moon are in straight line and moon is in middle thus blocking the sun's view on some parts of the earth. Phases of moon. As moon revolves around the earth it appears to change shape. Our moon. Moon is the only natural satellite of earth. It is believed to have formed by the debris which must have come out of earth's collision with another celestial body of nearly the size of Mars called Thea. Moon has always been an integral part of human life since time immemorial. The moon is among the large satellites of our solar system. It has a radius of nearly 1700 kilometers and equatorial circumference of close to 11,000 kilometers. The most interesting feature of the moon is that it takes almost the same time to complete one revolution around the earth and to complete one rotation on its axis. Due to this, we are able to see only one side of the moon every day. The position of moon when it is farthest from the earth is known as apogee and when it is closest to earth it is known as perigee. Phases of moon Just like earth, 
the moon receives light from the sun additionally the way we have day on half of the earth and night on the other half all the times the moon also has 50% of its surface illuminated by sun and 50% in darkness all the times we can see only that part of moon which is illuminated as the moon revolves around the sun we are able to see different portions of the moon which is illuminated by sun's light however the fact that 50% of moon is illuminated does not change these varying shapes of moon are known as phases of moon when the moon is between the earth and the sun during its revolution around the earth we do not see any portion of the illuminated half of the moon therefore the moon becomes invisible as the moon moves gradually ahead we begin to see its illuminated half this is known as waxing of moon it also means that the moon is growing on the other hand when the moon is on the other side we are able to see the full illuminated part of the moon this is known as the full moon after this as moon gradually moves ahead we begin to see lesser and lesser of its illuminated part this is known as vanning it also means the moon is shrinking lunar eclipse lunar eclipse is an event when the moon comes right behind the earth with the sun on the other side and is covered completely or partially by the shadow of earth it is obvious that the lunar eclipse can occur on days when the full moon is visible as we all know that once in every 28 days the moon earth and sun are in straight line with earth in the middle this is known as the full moon as we are able to see the complete illuminated side of moon but not on every full moon we experience lunar eclipse this is because the orbit of moon is not in perfect alignment with the orbit of earth in fact the orbit of moon is inclined to 5 degrees with the plane of ecliptic due to this the moon does not come exactly behind the earth during every full moon we see the lunar eclipse only when all three bodies are on the plane of ecliptic with the earth in middle we see a partial lunar eclipse when the moon is close to the plane of ecliptic and is covered into its penumbra shadow but when the moon is right on the plane of ecliptic it is covered into the dark shadow of earth known as umbra this is known as the total lunar eclipse the occurrence of a lunar eclipse can range from once to thrice in a calendar year lunar eclipse can be viewed from any part of the earth which is experiencing night it can stay for few hours solar eclipse a solar eclipse is an event when the sun the earth and the moon are in a straight line along the plane of ecliptic and the moon lies between the sun and the earth during solar eclipse the moon covers the sun and blocks its rays from reaching some part of earth this is possible only on new moon but we do not see solar eclipse on every new moon due to the inclination of the moon's orbit 
like the total and partial lunar eclipse we observe partial and total solar eclipse also when the moon is close to the plane of ecliptic we see a partial solar eclipse on the other hand when the moon is exactly on the plane of ecliptic we see a total solar eclipse the occurrence of a solar eclipse can range from 1 to 5 times in a calendar year unlike lunar eclipse a solar eclipse can be viewed only from relatively smaller part of the earth and it lasts generally for few minutes only tides another important effect of the moon on earth is the occurrence of tides in ocean water tides are the periodic rise and fall of the water level in the sea which occur at regular intervals twice a day even though the moon is smaller than the sun its gravitational pull has a greater effect on earth due to its nearness to the earth as compared to the sun the rise of the water level in the sea is called high tide and the fall of water level is called a low tide we experience two high tides and two low tides on a daily basis let's see how it happens as the moon orbits around the earth its gravity pulls the water of the earth nearest to it this makes the water on the earth bulge on the side facing the moon causing a high tide a similar bulge occurs on the opposite side of the earth this is caused by the centrifugal force produced due to earth's rotation between these two areas of high tide are the areas of low tide in areas of low tides the water levels are reduced spring tide twice in a month on full moon and on new moon the earth moon and sun are in line we experience higher water levels than normal high tides this happens due to the combined gravitational pulls of sun and moon such high tides are called spring tides during a spring tide the parts of earth facing the moon and those facing the sun experience highest high tides while the other two parts experience the lowest low tides neap tide when the moon the earth and the sun form a right angle the gravitational pull of moon and sun counteract the effect of each other and we experience low rise of water at places experiencing high tide they are known as neap tides constant rise and fall of sea water has many benefits than what one can imagine for instance it helps in the movement of large ships near the harbor the ships enter the harbor with a high tide and leave the harbor with a low tide it helps in extracting salt from the ocean it helps in generating electricity we use the power produced due to movement of water during high tide and low tide to generate electricity in areas of high latitudes tides keep the coast ice free by bringing saline water it also helps in fishing as more fish come near the coast during high tide it keeps the mouth of rivers and streams clean 
as the silt carried by rivers and streams are pulled into the ocean during the low tide. This was all for this session. In the next session, we will begin the next chapter and explore the history of Earth's grid system. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.